In the modern era of global communications and remote autonomous vehicles on distant worlds, it can seem obvious that light has a speed. But it wasn't always the case that we knew that. Most scientists suspected for a long time that light arrived at its destination instantly, and all of the early experiments with light seemed to confirm that. But that all changed in 1676 when the Danish astronomer Ole Romer actually measured the speed of light, and he did that accidentally. Romer was inspired by the legacies of previous Danish astronomers like Tycho Brahe to make his own mark on the field of astrometry, that is the precise measuring of the motions of celestial objects, and he chose as his object of fascination the Jovian moon Io. For several years, Romer peered at Jupiter and Io through a crude telescope, recording the precise times that Io would disappear behind Jupiter and reappear again several hours later. His view might have looked something like this. From these measurements, he hoped to make the most accurate measurement yet of Io's orbital period around Jupiter. But something was very wrong with his data. If he computed the orbital period using measurements he collected in the spring, and made predictions for when Io would disappear behind Jupiter in the fall, he found that Io would disappear several minutes too early. But if he just waited until spring again, his predictions would be correct again. Somehow, Io's orbit around Jupiter seemed to change with the seasons of the Earth, and Romer knew that didn't make any sense. After puzzling over this for a couple of years, all the while collecting more data about Io's orbit, the solution suddenly hit him. It couldn't be that Io's orbit was changing with the Earth's seasons. After all, Io doesn't care about the Earth any more than Jupiter does. It had to be that his observations of the orbit were changing. Something was different about how he was measuring the orbit in the spring versus how he was doing it in the fall. And the only difference that could conceivably matter was the position of the Earth in the solar system. He realized that the Earth being closer to Jupiter in the fall must be responsible for Io's early vanishing act. So he divided the difference in this distance to Jupiter, which is really just the diameter of Earth's orbit around the Sun, by the difference in the times for Io's occultation behind Jupiter, and he became the first person to ever measure the speed of light, and really the first person to know for certain that light had a speed at all. Now, can we replicate what Romer did? Well, my astronomy days are kind of behind me, and I don't really feel like staying up that many nights in a row. But anything that can be done well can be simulated poorly. So let's have a go at simulating Romer's calculations. I'm going to use Stellarium for this. And first I'll record the times for when Io passes behind Jupiter in March from my home here in Livermore. I recorded the time for four consecutive occultations, and from those times I can compute the period of Io's orbit at about 42 and a half hours. Now we can plot Io's orbit as a function of time, and anytime you're dealing with something that's periodic, you should be thinking of sine waves. In this case we can model the orbit of Io as a sine wave with a period of 42 and a half hours. And if I take the time halfway between the first disappearance and reappearance as time zero, you can see that the three subsequent measurements all lie at the zero points of the sinusoid. So that's good. Now I'll record the times for four consecutive occultations six months later in September. If I want to place these times on the same plot, I need to subtract an hour for daylight savings time and add the 207 intervening days. And look at that. They're all early by about 22 minutes. So let's take the diameter of Earth's orbit, which is two astronomical units, Divide that by 22 minutes, and we get 227,000 kilometers per second, or about 75% the true speed of light, which is honestly not bad for how crudely I measured this. What's slightly strange to me is that this is very close to the value that Romer also measured. He also found a time difference of 22 minutes, whereas the real time difference should be about 16 minutes. I can't account for how I could have made the exact same mistake he did, but if you know why this might be, Leave a comment below because I'm genuinely interested in what the largest error is here. In any case, it's always a fun exercise to try to measure the fundamental constants of the universe. And while I only simulated measuring the speed of light, in principle anyone could do this for real. And it just goes to show that many of the discoveries that we assume required teams of people with expensive instruments were actually accomplished by single individuals with little more than some glass and a lot of patience.